Welcome, everybody. Um, today's a very special day because we're playing the Mist Walkabout Mini Golf Course with the co creator of Mist, Rand Miller. So, welcome, Rand, to your hey, island. Thanks, Lucas. <laughs> Yeah, this is yeah. weird. There's not supposed to be other people on this island, so this is a little bit weird, you know, to be interviewed with other people on an island that's very private up till this point, you know. So yeah, kind of cool. It was. The, I remember that was one of the very first things that you said when we were um, when we did our very first playtest, and you guys dropped in with us in multiplayer because we could literally just fly around. Like the holes were functional, but it was like still in pretty early state. But still, it was just that initial like people are around was like actually the weirder thing than seeing the island itself. Almost so. very crazy feeling. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's very it's really cool. It's it's weird to start on the dock here, and the first thing you see is you know you see the gears, but oh yeah. wait, there's a mini golf hole hole between you and the <laughs> gears. It's very cool. Uh, I love been, it. I, and the I've water, by the way, I'm I'm looking out at the water. I just got to say, that is <laughs> like some majorly well done mist water there. OG we got to hand it to cool water. Yeah. We got to hand it to Craig our uh, lead tech artist. He is a yeah, probably a missed originalist. So once he says like, "Oh no, we got to go with the green water." It's like, "Okay, let's see what we can." You see, yeah, we had a he did a great job of like capturing that feeling it feels like of the original game because of our low poly style and everything, but also like do doing some cool stuff that like you could never get to run. I mean, I know that it was everything was pre-rendered, but still like some pretty advanced looking things that you might miss, but all those details just add up. So, well, let's yeah, let's awesome. play a little mini golf while we chat. Let's do a little tour of the island. Let me um, take my first shot here. And uh, this is this is really what this is all about. We're gonna put some money on this game and uh, and see how uh, sweet. Yeah, see how you are at mini golf. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, I'm going next. You ready? Yeah, go for it. Mm -hmm. All right. So you guys were actually... Um, so when we chatted for the first time, it sounded like you guys had already been playing Walkabout a little bit. So you, it's not like it was kind of coming out of left field. You were at least somewhat familiar with the, with the game. Yeah, yeah. I think the first time... <laughs> This is a weird little fact. The first time I was actually in Walkabout was with my brother, Robin, and mm -hmm. Richard Vanderwin. Um, okay. We kind of had a little <laughs> meeting in here that was kind of fun. So, yeah. Yeah. It all just, it all comes full circle. Well, and we've been just having chatted with, with you and a bunch of the other folks at Cyan, we've been saying it's kind of funny how, like, I mean, you guys have been around for 30 plus years, but it also feels just sort of like very similar, very similar size. It's sort of like how you guys, I'm actually like, I don't want to dive too deep into like the Fail. crazy, like the, the crazy sort of like, like business questions, but I do have to kind of curious, like, so you guys have been around for 30 years doing, oops, got a little wonky there. Um, you guys have been around for, yeah, for 30 years, just sort of like how, like, you're one of the few companies, especially that has managed to stay independent for that long. I'm just kind of curious, sort of like, yeah, how you do it or how you sort of like have survived for for this long, because it's a tough industry. It is do you have very, any tips for all should, the VR devs who are just getting in? <laughs> yeah. Nobody should get into game... Uh, production lightly. Oh my goodness. As yeah. you know, it's like this is much <laughs> harder than it seems. But yeah, I think because I mean the the tricky part is everybody thinks, "Oh, wow, Cyan, they made Mist and they've been coasting ever since and they don't see the before and the after of that, which is mm -hmm. before there were many years of of scrappy um uh, crazy, crazy, uh, like bankruptcies and from from publishers and fighting battles and staying alive. And honestly, it's about being incredibly scrappy and pivoting quickly. And um, yeah, I mean, Mist helps. Let's face it, Mist yeah you know, helps us helps things. It built a office for us that we could stay in during lean times, but 
you know, I don't know that we'd have it any other way. It's so nice being indie and being able to do this the way we want. Oh, so I boy. am kind of... So let's actually go back a little bit because I, I mean, I know some about Mist, but I'd love to hear sort of like even the, like the before Mist, like, cause that was a huge game. It was super technically and artistically complex. What had you done previously that kind of paved the way for Mist? Yeah, in a lot of ways we were we were practicing. We were doing um, kind of these kids games to try and try and get our uh, I don't know figure out oh, what. He, oh yes, that I needed that, Lucas. I needed that badly. <laughs> that was uh, you could tell that was that was a well planned shot. That, I, that was that banks, was perfectly yeah. That yeah, was completely I what you meant to all do. That. Uh -huh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, no, we did we did a few kids. Uh, worlds is what we call them and okay. you know they didn't have goals they didn't have purposes but but they let us um, figure out what people would do in these situations and how we could build these things to and, and get better at it and we got to practice our craft and still have people kind of buy our stuff as we were going but but you know we we had all kinds of issues like uh, at some point um, oh, that's gonna hurt. Oh, I hate when that happens. <laughs> just like real mini golf. Just like real mini golf. It's, we are totally just, yeah, we do not care about your feelings at all. We just want you to <laughs> suffer at the hand of, of ball physics. That's really, it's, it's, gra it's gravity a, is, is the nemesis in this game, you know? <laughs> So, how long had you guys been no, around before before Mist? Sorry, when you I'm distracted by <laughs> losing. I'll 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 let you sort of like finish this putt before I hit you with the next question then. <laughs> just oh gosh, that'll do it. Just cutting the angle here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. So how right. long had you so had you guys been doing those other games sort of like as as Cyan before you <clears throat> before Mist came along? You know, there was probably, um, was it 10 years of those other games, maybe? Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe, that that. maybe it just seemed like 10 years, but it was mm -hmm. probably from uh, 80, well, I don't know, 87 to 94, 86, 84. I mean, I don't know when we got started, okay, yeah. 80, 80 something. So, yeah, it was, you know, five to 10 years of, of other but, things. But yeah, you were doing it. Scrappy, and it was just, yeah. Just my brother and, and I for for a lot of those, so. And how did you sort of, like, how did you just get into it or sort of learn how to, to do all of this? Because all the game stuff was sort of, like, cutting edge. There weren't schools. There weren't books. Like, where did you sort of just, how did you learn to, to do all of it? Well, I mean, that that's, we kind of learned on our own. And, I mean, we used every tool we could get to kind of uh, um, help us. I mean, we built the world mm -hmm. in HyperCard because it, it worked for us, so. Okay, um, so, the, was so basically, yeah, the- great platform. Yeah. So by the us, time Mist came along, you had already sort of like, yeah, you had kind of really sort of like gotten very comfortable with HyperCard then. Exactly, sorry, I'm not even paying attention here. What am I, okay. I gotta do. Yeah, oh, you gotta solve the go. puzzle first. Spoiler yeah, alert. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was in here. I played this twice uh, over the weekend, and it's this this uh, it's distracting having you ask me questions. Can I just play the game and forget the <laughs> questions part? You know. We could just not talk. Yeah, we could just. Uh, yeah, we could just get really I, uh, <laughs> like aggressively. I did sort pretty of, like, good over the week. I did pretty good over the weekend. I have to say, I was, you know, yeah. I impressed my wife. Um, she was like, oh, wow, you are, you're good at this. Like, yeah, until I'm actually in the middle of talking while I'm doing it. It's all part of the distraction. Well, now is probably the best that I will ever get at this course. That's how it always happens <laughs> because as we get close to a release, that's when we have to like just testing, 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 and just like trying to break stuff. And so I end up just, yeah, I've probably played all these holes at least 20 times in the last couple of weeks, so <laughs> it's really yep. kind of unfair. I should switch to left-handed, but I'm not going to do that. Oh, that I love when you... That's not what I meant to do. I love that. That made me happy, unless you did it on purpose. Uh, oh, no, no, yes. 
See that? There. Yeah, See now that? This I have a chance. chance now. This is your chance. Yep. <laughs> this is my chance. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this hole is not one I often do well, so... So, if I could ask sort of another, like, even geekier uh, question, just because it's something that I'm really, really curious about. So, well, I, let me also just say that I realized sort of, like, even just recently, um, like, how much, like, honestly, Mist was probably the thing that got me into making games and making animation, because I realized that, like, shortly after Mist came out, I got a copy of Bryce 3D. Um, oh, and started yeah. playing around yeah. with some of the some of the landscape generation and that, and that was a probably one of the first sort of like consumer grade 3D. Like you could, they made it a lot of stuff. It was simple; you couldn't do a ton with it, but you could do sort of like Bob Ross landscapes with it. And yep, I yep. had this idea that I wanted to do a Journey to the Center of the Earth point and click adventure game, and I, I mean. At the time, I was would have been in my teens, so I didn't realize how much of a sort of like it was like. Oh, I just wanted to make Mist. I just think it's nice. how ironic that now here we are. Now we're making Mist with you, and Journey to the Center of the Earth is one of the courses that we have coming up. So I just want to thank you <laughs> for yeah for manifesting all of that. Um, I love it. Oh, this is your turn because you won this or you won the last one. Oh, but, for once. So, so. I'm also very curious. So, like, so early on, you like mid '90s. Like, were you even doing a lot of the educational games? Like, what what software were you actually building a lot of the worlds, like the pre-rendered graphics in? By the way, I'm gonna stand in. All, uh, you know, we're, we're talking so much about me that I'm I'm losing a little of this. This is so <laughs> good what you guys have done here. The way you interpreted so much of this is so much fun. The tree going up yeah. and down. You know, it's just really great nice job I, you guys. I will i will interject and say that that uh henning uh henning kachi our lead level designer did um really he's a big mist fan but he took a lot of the designs um or of things from the original game and found a way to like mini golfify them um and yep, yep. really a lot of this does come down to him the irony is uh, like this was one of the easiest courses to build just because like really you guys gave us the island we had to rebuild it in our style but still like it was all figured out um yeah but then yeah. the actual execution of all of the puzzles that came about that's i'm just handing the lead over to you oh <laughs> uh, i don't but, know um, yeah but yeah, yeah like all of the puzzles and the what... switching mechanic it oh go ahead yeah oh i was gonna say it adds such a cool element to um to the whole thing you know i mean it's yeah. and, and you don't expect it at first i mean you go down to the first hole and you're like wait there's a wall there what do i do and mm -hmm. all of a sudden you realize you start to realize the mechanics i mean spoiler alert mm -hmm. if you're watching us you're, you're going to learn a lot of little things here and there <laughs> but and then there's layers of that that you start to find which is so missed mm -hmm. it's so missed so yeah nice job yeah Oh yeah, and all of the Easter eggs the team has put in. Like I was, uh, I actually just had to go through and like really kind of take a glance at all of them for a couple different purposes and sort of like, oh wow, I didn't even realize that some of this stuff was in here. I just found something under hole four that I had no idea was in there. That's like, oh wow, I didn't even know about that yep. one. So I'm glad yep. that so uh, many little treats. I just, it's so much fun. People are gonna mm -hmm. love this, Lucas. They are gonna oh, love yeah. it. I mean, it's, it's so fun. Yeah. Well, um, well, yeah, so, okay, so if I can, just because I'm really, really curious. So, yeah, so that was the other side. So of the, um, there's the actual, like, creating the game, but doing all the pre-rendered stuff that you guys were doing. Like, it was just, it, I mean, completely cutting edge, so, so advanced on, like, multiple technical fronts. Was that just, was that just you and Robin that was doing all of that work? Um, it, it was at the beginning with Mist. Um, we added more people. With I mean, with our other okay. games, we actually we actually had uh, friends filling in. We had a couple people who helped with music and with our with the with the children's worlds or the you know younger audience or I mean, I actually adults loved them too. But um, mm -hmm. but then when we when we took on Mist, we realized okay, this was going to be bigger, and we needed to. 
shore up our our team. So we added some other people, Chuck Carter, um, mm -hmm. who people are familiar with, and uh, Chris Brandcamp, um, Bonnie Staub, um, and uh, even our brother Ryan helped out as well. So yeah, it was a oh, cool. it was a bigger team, and that was weird for us because it had been us mostly us just for so long. It was mm -hmm. kind of exciting having a larger team for a change. Yeah, yeah, kind of cool. How? How did you, I mean, I guess at that point it was sort of like, so seven, eight people, so a larger team, but still not like, still not so large that you were spending all of your time managing people. Like you were still probably doing most of the, a lot of the hands-on stuff, I would guess, right? Oh yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. In fact, I mean, as much as their management is a thing in a small company, if you think yeah. that you can just be a manager in a small indie yeah studio you're probably in for a big surprise because everybody's got mm -hmm. to got to get their hands a little bit dirty and and oh yeah I, mean, I was just doing sounds for firmament yesterday so as much as okay. you know i'm managing and i'm older and i'm somewhat trying to retire i'm still involved in production <laughs> which is which the, is well, great i you know it's it's well, uh the, kind of fun i I love that, and that actually makes me feel better because two nights ago I was literally putting in the gear sounds for this hole and thinking like, oh man, I yeah, I uh, I had to dust <laughs> off my audio skills in a way that I haven't had to do in a little while and was sort of like, that's right. There's yeah. people who could do this yep. better than me, but hey, with the size that we're at right now, nope, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in here and and master these yep. audio files. So <laughs> stuff's gotta awesome get to done, hear. and you got you just mm -hmm. just gotta do it. Yeah. Oh, so, snap bad so let's actually i mean there's so many questions that i could ask about sort of like other games and 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 all that but i guess one of the things that i'm most kind of curious about is sort of like how how things have changed or not changed even just sort of like technology wise like just sort of like coming from because i mean mist was 94 right like just yep. yeah yeah 93 94 mm-hmm Okay, so we're coming up on we're coming up on thirty years. So like, I'm just kind of curious how, yeah, how you do things differently. Do you does the does it think do, does it make you think a lot differently, or are you still um, do you feel like it's a, it's just sort of a natural evolution that and you're do, tapping a lot of the skills that you were using from the original Mist design. You know the designs. If you if you're involved in the designing part, it's very similar because. Mm -hmm we're still just making worlds that's what it feels like we're making worlds with and we're adding a little bit of friction into those worlds so mm -hmm. you know regardless of whether it's you have to take into account whether it's real time or not real time or whether it's vr or not vr but it mm -hmm. those are small walls that you design within and it feels mm -hmm. very similar other than that yeah cool yeah real time and well you know honestly it, one of the things that we've talked about you and I is one of the big things that changes um, how you do these worlds is multiplayer and that's something you guys have had oh, to deal yeah. with like big time in <laughs> you know it's one thing if you're playing golf but it's another thing if you've got puzzles and you've got walkways yeah. that open and close and suddenly whoever's turn it is all the states change and you have to deal with all that we learned those lessons when we were doing mist online and mm -hmm. oh my goodness it or i mean it adds an order of magnitude of complexity when you add yeah. one other person into the mix by the way this i mean whole full is disclosure like this is actually a, oh it's so it's, it seems so simple but uh, yeah yeah, yeah full oh, disclosure this so is actually simple. the second time that we've recorded this because the first time the multiplayer was on a pre-release build and it uh, it didn't work, so we got in here and tried to play, and it didn't work. So, yeah, multiplayer right. is a whole. It's way way more complex than anyone realizes. So, um, yeah. This so one, I this is the one hole I'm gonna get a lot of strokes in. I no matter what I do, I have this hardest time. Oh, look! There at, you go. See that? We gotta. Nope. At least we got gotta get open. in. Yeah. Uh, we gotta get in match play for you, so that. Oh. So it's uh yeah. This is, this is well that was so just a gimme. Grueling. I don't feel bad for you on that one. That was <laughs> Yeah. This so, is a uh, we're having a meeting. We're not playing mini golf, we're having a meeting. That's what this is. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. This is just a yeah. it's just mm -hmm. a friendly 
friendly little game. No. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm just playing. You're not going to owe me now. a ton of money after this or anything. No, I'm going to catch up on the my, on the. I mean, you know, the next I don't, few holes actually. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it, but I do believe that uh, that Mighty Coconut will own the rights to Mist after this game. So that's. <laughs> There's a lot on the line. <laughs> there is a lot yeah. on the line. Now, the last time I played this hole, I got I got this one in one shot. So. Okay. Just saying. So one of the things I want to come back to something you were saying, because one of the things that, that I've heard you say before is that you guys really do think of it almost as the world's building aspect is really the thing that you guys kind of start with that you're like the puzzles yes. are sort of like they're they're a critical part of it but you really start more with the the world itself so what is that sort of like that as you're coming up with news so for instance like firmament you i know it's coming up uh, pretty soon here what was the sort of like the nugget or the process for coming up with that that game um you know the 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 seeds it's weird where the seeds come from um and it's hard to describe. It's things that interest us and things that we haven't done before, but things that seem like they could be an intriguing storyline and allow us to make, oh, that was terrible, um, make a fun, um, fun places, fun, interesting places. No, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. Um, so, yeah, Firmament was... I mean, I don't want to give away too much because it's, you know, but it, it, right, it was the storyline that kind of intrigued us with that one as much as anything. We came mm -hmm. up with a cool story, uh, cool elements of the story that were that were really fun. Um, and, you know, having... Uh, Having certain reveals at certain times are always fun during the story. It's 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 hard telling yeah. stories in an interactive environment because the environment itself has to reveal things. So right, we're always trying to vary, you know, change things a little bit to 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 hone our skills at doing that. And it's not always successful. It's not mm -hmm. always great, but we feel like Firmament's got a good opportunity to, to be one of our better stories at this point, which is kind of that's, fun. That's all. So I mean. Um, by the way, so I come, my, my background is actually in filmmaking and, and screenwriting, mostly in animation. So like when you mentioned story, it's sort of like my, I've done a couple of, of story driven things. And the, the one specific interactive thing was actually sort of a branching narrative. And we really limited the, oof, a little too much. We really limited the mechanics of it so in close. order to try to give us the room to tell the story. So when you're doing something like, yeah, Firmament as just an, as an example, or if you, whichever game you kind of feel is the best example, sort of like, how do you go about sort of like crafting that story or like, to me in screenwriting, there's so many, like it's a very, um, there's a lot of rules that you can follow. And it just seems like in the games world, you really kind of have to reinvent the wheel almost every single time. So how do you even just like start to crack that with a, with a game? Yeah, it's it's hard, and Firmament went through so many iterations. It was, it was actually kind of crazy how many mm -hmm. times we iterated with the story. We knew we had a core of something good, but you're right. You don't you don't just you don't just tell a story in interactive. The world kind of reveals itself as you go, and so you mm -hmm. have to plan for that. And you 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 add a little friction here and there, and the narrative is revealed as kind of a, a reward in a, in a lot of ways mm -hmm. as much as and and you know it's kind of that way in a movie um there's friction and then there's revelation and mm -hmm. you can anticipate things ahead of time and then see if you're right when it's revealed and you want just the right yeah. amount of friction before you reveal and and mm -hmm. you want the the right amount of twist because you want people to go oh my gosh i didn't see that but oh but look it was right there all the time and so a lot mm -hmm. of those elements are the same it's just how you tell it it has to it's it's revealed at its own pace and interactive and you can't force it or it feels like you're trying to make a movie instead of instead of a, a world yeah 
Right, so, yeah. Do you yeah. even, because I, I, I think that one of the things that's also kind of hung me up a little bit trying to do interactive storytelling is often in film we have the script and the script is just, it's a standard format. It's like there's so many things that you can communicate in that. It seems like in games, like one of the biggest problems can often be sort of like, how do you capture uh, the idea of for a story moment and hold on to it or how do you communicate that oh, with yeah. the team like do you actually write stuff out in twine or in some sort of like in some sort of script format you know we've used uh, any and every tool we could get and it depends on the game um mm -hmm. for um for firmament it was unique uh, well, you know, I will, I, they're always different. It's just bizarre. So much of it ends up just being spreadsheets, I think, just because okay. it, it, we've used, you know, lots of other tools, but it, it depends on the, on what we've got. So, mm -hmm. and it's so hard with interactive because like, for example, with Firmament, we've divided everything, all of our scripts into both um location based um revelations or um or um 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 uh, or um yeah sorry yeah um yeah or, sorry yeah, I, or I basically or like the narrative the and walk at the same time <laughs> or or well, you got to hit it backwards kind of, on this hole too yeah achievement kind of uh achievement kind of revelations or achievement kind of script revelations. So, so sometimes you just, and by the way, there's also kind of the, the necessary uh, elements of the mechanics of the gameplay that you're trying mm -hmm. to get out of the way, as well as the, the narrative itself. And you've got to do both mm -hmm. of those and you've got to work between those. And you, you also want to spell out goals sometimes, and sometimes you want them to, speak for themselves a little bit so it's it's it gets so complicated trying to weave all that in and it doesn't mean we do it right i mean i feel like every one of these games is an experiment um mm -hmm. but you know it's it's a great way to to learn for the next one yeah so we'll see yeah. we'll see how people feel about That's awesome. i the story in front of it still is like so good such an exciting yeah. story so well i can't wait to to check it out i'm so I feel like I would be uh, missing a, a if I didn't at least if I didn't talk, especially as we're playing about or as we're um, playing this sort of like puzzle based mini mini golf game. How, what is like the just the puzzles like that was something that really sort of like grabbed people and it was it was really the place that brought people into mist, but it's the puzzles that so many people remember and sort of like, do you have like like, do you have sort of like a specific rule? Like, what is it that makes sort of like a, because all of your, all of the, um, all the Cyan games have a tone and a language and to the puzzles. Like, do you have sort of like a rule set that you follow or is it just sort of like, you just kind of go with your gut on that? You know, I, it's this weird balance with the puzzles, especially where you want I mean, we got better and better at this, and Riven was was kind of the, the biggest learning point of this, where mm -hmm. the puzzles, if they fit into the world and they don't feel like puzzles, people really appreciate it. Or at least, I think our biggest fans really get that, where we merge mm -hmm. the puzzles to feel like, oh, this isn't just a blatant puzzle. This is something yeah. that's in this world and is there for a reason. And yeah, at the same time, you have to balance that with making things fun and making them obvious. And so it's this, mm -hmm. this weird kind of back and forth that tugs, tugs on each end. Um, it has to, we've, we've talked about these three, three pillars that kind of support what we do. It's the narrative you know, has to support the puzzles, the, the friction, and then the mm -hmm. friction has to support the uh, aesthetics of the world, the environment. And so, and those, those three actually each of those supports the other one and you try and balance those. I think that's what, the way we look at our worlds is we try to balance those three. That makes a lot of sense. And yeah, sense like I, yeah, and exactly. I totally see what you're saying with, with Riven. Yeah, like it, it felt very sort of like of the world and it, it, 
the challenge with that is also, like I said, it does still need to feel like a puzzle, and it needs to have that satisfying, hold on, hold on, nope, it's gone, that satisfying aha moment, or even just knowing where the puzzle is, um, can be a, yeah, a real, yeah. real challenge. And that's one of the things that I love wow. from, um, um, so just growing up, you know, just when I did, like the other, uh, I also played a lot of LucasArts games, which are the other sort of like totally different style, yeah. very, very different, sort of like the idea of a puzzle, drastically, drastically different. Um, I'm kind of curious, did you, um, what other what other games did you did you love even if it wasn't something that you were um that you were trying to copy like not even puzzle games but sort of like what are some of your other sort of like favorites that you've played recently or or anytime really you know i think we were influenced a lot or i was in particular by the early zork games or adventure games oh, they yeah. were all text mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they they felt like I think the the thing I've used before is if you can play a game and then go to work or school the next day and start talking about what you did mm -hmm. in a way that feel that people around you would go like, wait, 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 you you went to another world, another place, like what are you talking about? Then then that's a it's an interesting achievement, you know? Like, wait a minute, you you were walking in a forest and there's a mailbox and you gave gave a guy a sandwich and it opened a cave like what are you talking about this is so weird mm -hmm. um and that's how it felt with the uh with those zork games and the adventure games to us you know it was it felt like it was um you had been in those places and i think that influenced us and then there were some early um early graphic adventure games um Oh, what was the, uh, I don't remember the name of it, but I know you started in like a bathroom stall, passed out. It was an early Mac black and white adventure game. And I'm trying to you, remember now. Yeah, it was, I mean, this is way it back. Familiar. Yeah, yeah, but you. I played a lot you, of those because that was the era that the, I would have. Yeah, yeah, you, you come out of that stall, you're like, what's going on? And the idea is to figure out why you're there. And I think that influenced mm -hmm. us a bit too. We. We always liked less instruction, you know, just yeah. what, you know, just plop you plop a person in here and let the environment speak for itself. Let let them kind of engage the world and figure out what what's going on. That always seemed like a, a valuable thing to do as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious, has does VR because you guys have been you guys have been doing VR was um, what would the first one have been? Would it have been, what was, yeah, what was the first Abduction. VR game that you guys did? Abduction was the first one? Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah that one that was really... so crazy. Oh, so close. And does your process change much when you're thinking about VR or is it the same process and it's, and it's just sort of a different technical back end? Yeah, I mean, it changes and it doesn't change. It's, um, it's kind of an interesting, the interface changes a bit and you have yeah you i mean i like the fact that in vr it feels like you have your hands i mean in an yeah. odd throwback it all that's how mist kind of started it felt like you had one hand with a pointer finger you know that you could do things yeah. with and in vr that's very intuitive i mean that's like sit somebody mm -hmm. in front of a screen with a hand with a pointer and they just click they just mm -hmm. you know so so VR feels the same way. You give some, you have a hand in VR, and it feels like you can walk up to something and touch it, or point at it, or pick it up, or, and so that does change. It gives you a few more interesting tools to work with. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean we we've mastered it. Again, it feels like we're experimenting again. Um, but, Good shot. Um, but it's a. I am super excited about VR. I mean, that's the thing that like makes me excited about all of this again. It just feels like you're in a world. It's such a crazy, yeah. crazy thing. So, yeah, yeah. It gets me and out of the bed, it, bed in the morning when I can do that. It, it is true that you guys are also just with the type of gameplay and storytelling that you do. You're also sort of like kind of it is very much made for vr because i think the thing that always catches a lot of people off guard when they think of like oh let's just take this other triple a game and throw it in there there is a really big 
change that happens in VR where it goes from you controlling a player like with a over the shoulder camera or something to when you are the person. And even just like right. having an NPC, like having a conversation with an NPC, if your avatar is on screen talking to somebody, that's a much easier thing to do than having someone who needs to feel like they're in the world making eye contact. It is a ridiculously yeah, yeah. complex thing to do. But yeah, what you were doing, I mean, even as early as Mist and the games before that, it's like, it's exactly what VR is. It's just a new control thing. So yeah, it does. you, you really don't have to, to change how you're thinking about things, do you? Right, right. No, no. It fe it feels like we just get to make our more our worlds more real. I mean, every everything we do here feels like we're adding just reality to the worlds. So, mm -hmm. you know, we when real time 3D came out, that felt like our worlds got more real. When VR comes out, mm -hmm. they get more real. It's just every little step. I and mean, let's face it, we we started with just black and white. So even color added an element to yeah. our worlds. Um, so it's, you know, the yeah. it just feels like those are all nice little tools in our tool chest that make the worlds more, more immersive. Totally. Do you have any, any predictions about VR or what, what is the, the one advancement, whether it's hardware or software or tech or whatever, like what is the one thing about like the, you you think will be the biggest game changer for VR? You know, I'm. I think VR is going to iterate now. That that's mm -hmm. I and mean, that's all that happens now. As we get better and better and better, I think the Quest uh, Two was huge. And as soon as I knew the specs of it, I was convinced that was a giant step forward getting rid of yeah. the cables because that mm -hmm. and getting rid of the PC. I mean, it, it's look, I played Half-Life Alex and I loved, I mean, it was so amazing, but a normal yeah. person is not going to go th jump through the hoops I had to do to play Half-Life Alex. It's like my PC always wanted updated and there's drivers and something's not synced mm -hmm. and I got to update this and it's, you know, it's so it's visually stunning, but man, it's just different when you put the headset on and play. That just makes a yeah. world of difference. And we all know where this goes. They just get better and better from here on out. So, yeah. um, so I it's think less that about, is It's how, more about the gradual yeah. improvement as opposed to like there's one massive yeah. thing. Like the stand, the jump to standalone almost sounds like that was the big thing that you were most waiting for. Uh, that was the big thing for me. It iterates from here. Now, I do think that that AR is, is going to be a, a, just a, a, a gigantic... Um, I think that's going to be huge, but it's going to take a long time to to kind of make that all happen. So, um, yeah, to me, VR. I mean, if you everything, this is going to sound really weird and and very esoteric or something, but technology that we've had up till this point, including screens and phones and even TVs and VR, all of that is just transitional building to AR because AR means that mm -hmm. your screens are anywhere you want them. The whole world is your palette. Everything is everything is flexible and in flux and you you know there there's ads and you know unfortunately as well as games everywhere fortunately yeah you know, but it'll be it, great it ad truly is, software yeah that's right <laughs> but it but that'll change everything i think that makes a, a really big difference um but that's a that's a long ways coming that's a lot of tech and a lot of problems yeah. to solve before we get there um so that's how VR i feel is as well that i do like time. yeah yeah, that's I feel that as well. Sort of like, and whenever people talk about the metaverse, it's sort of like, I totally think that yes, it is coming, but it's also so far off and it's so hazy in what it even is. Like, I'm much less interested in that. That is probably ten years from any sort of real, sort of like, you know, real conversation or that it becomes real and sort of like a normal part of people's life. I'm way more interested yeah. right now, sort of like what is the technology capable of doing now and what cool things can we do with, with, yeah, just the, the pieces that are already in play because I mean, just the, 
I'm constantly right. amazed that any of this stuff works at all. Like even the fact that our brains accept it is kind of fascinating yeah, to me. Yeah. At the end, at the end here, it's kind of interesting to wrap it up and say that um, it feels like VR is at the big. The exciting part is it's it's the wild west. I said this, you know, years ago when we got started with it, but. But we're like defining what this is. There are some rules that are starting to be established, like how you move. I mean, we got started in VR and we didn't even know how you would move yeah. because mm -hmm. locomotion, you know, true fluid motion makes some people sick. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, you know, people are teleporting and like, oh, that works pretty good. And it starts to become one of those standards. But mm -hmm. there's still so much flexibility and so many things we can define every time we do it. You guys are are doing that even with a mini golf game that has yeah. multiplayer trying to define the rules. Like how do you make match people up? How do you go to the same game? How do you, mm -hmm. you know, chat with friends? What does that mean? How much of the body do you show? You know, what like all of those things are not just givens. You have to define them. And that is pretty darn exciting. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's such a cool time to be in. I'm just realizing, yeah, that you've got 30 years of pretty much being on the, the cutting edge from CD-ROM all the way up till VR. So yeah, you've just, yeah, you're just still innovating and, and in helping invent the way that people play and experience worlds. So, well, thank you so much for taking the time to, to, to play with us and for also letting us play with your world, your island. So, um, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, my pleasure. Everybody this was out. this so much fun being here and in our world that's a different in a different shape. I I just I'm so excited Lucas about this. I think people are just going to love it. It's you know, it's this weird line between the purity of mist and just not taking things so seriously and having fun mm -hmm. on the island for a change. Yeah. I think people talk <laughs> about that and and think about it all the time, but you guys have pulled it off. It's just going to be a blast. I can't wait to see what people, how people enjoy it. It's really cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, thank you again, everybody. Yeah. Check out, check out Mist if you haven't played Mist. Uh, play Walkabout Mini Golf. Firmament, do you have a release date for Firmament yet? Uh, not yet. Uh, okay. Well, when it comes all out. All I can say is it's being wrapped up. I mean, there's a lot of work okay. on it every day these yeah. days. You know how that is, but yeah. Oh, Soon. yeah. Totally. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much for having us. We'll see you guys next time.